All right, what's up all the bays out there? Today we're looking at the GSAP Motion Path plugin, which we're gonna use to animate this dot along an SVG path that we're gonna overlay right on top of an image. The Motion Path plugin from GSAP is actually pretty easy to implement. You'll see on their documentation, they just have a couple lines of code there. Um, the major struggle I had was in positioning the SVG over the image itself. So we'll dive right into that as well. I'm gonna start off doing just a quick implementation, copy copy and paste some code, get it working really quickly, and then I'll walk through the code line by line um, if you're interested in writing it from scratch. Okay, so for the Webflow project here, I've got page wrap at the top level, and that's just setting the layout with Flexbox vertical, centering things, got some padding on the side, uh, height of 100 viewport heights. And then inside that I have map wrap. The only thing this is doing is position relative because inside of that I'm gonna have some position absolute elements. I've got the dot here. This is position absolute. It's got a three viewport width, uh, width and height, as well as some positioning with percentage here. I think it's got like border and radius and a color. Um, on the map wrap, I also have a filter to hue rotate the colors just to make it look kind of cute. And then the map image is just a normal image imported here. I give it 100% width so it fills up the max of its parent container. And then I've got a border on that thing too to also keep with the cuteness. The major one that we want to look at is this path embed. So this is a custom code embed. And right now it's empty with no styles on it because I want to show you how I built this. Um, so if I bring up Adobe Illustrator, you could use Figma for this as well. I just built this path using the curvature tool and I did it right on top of the image that I downloaded. It's a Strava route that I use um, that I like to run here in San Francisco. Anyways, I just clicked Command C to copy. And what we want to do is we want to copy that SVG code. And then we'll open the custom code box here and I'll paste and you see we get our SVG code right here. Now the thing we're gonna animate along is this path. So I'm gonna give this an ID equal to path so that I can access it from the code. We'll go ahead and save and close that. And now, whoa, we get this big thing here. Uh, let's start by setting the embed to position absolute. So now we're here, but it's got no um, width or height information. I'm gonna put it to the top left and we'll give it a width of something like 30% for now. Um, that's going to change in just a minute. The way I do these is once I have it positioned within the box I want it to go, I'm going to align the leftmost kind of position on the SVG with the leftmost position here as well as the topmost with the topmost. So hopefully you can see kind of where I'm pointing at with the mouse. And I'm going to use that using margin left and margin top and doing percent. I think if I did something like 33% and something like 10%, uh, it's going to kind of get close in. So this needs to come down a little bit. Uh, that looked good. And so now we can adjust the width to get what we want. So if I just start coming down, uh, width at 24%, that's a little too low. 25 is too high. So let's do 24.5. And then 33 here, I'm going to set this to 33.5. And this is looking pretty good. It's a little bit off right there, but for the demo purposes, that's fine. Uh, I showed you how to get the path there. The dot, I also have an ID of dot. So those are the two things that we need IDs for because we want to animate them. So on my website, I have this motion path plugin page that's inside the boost section. And we're just going to copy this code here. And this goes inside the head tag in Webflow. So go to the page, click the gear icon, come on down here. Oh, you can see I've already got it in, but let's just delete and copy paste. And then I'll delete this and come back to my web page. And we're going to copy all of this and paste it. And we'll go ahead and save and publish. And now if I open this, we can see we've got a dot that's animating along the path. Now this path is all black and we don't want that. So all we have to do is get the embed and we'll just bring this opacity down to zero and republish. And you can see now we've got this thing animating without the black path on top. So. That is how to get this going within your project really quickly. You can also see that as we resize it, everything scales. And um, that's important. I'll show you how we make that happen with the code. OK. OK, so we're in the code now. Before I do anything, I'm just going to take the address from Code Sandbox and plug that into Webflow. And I'll delete everything down here. and publish. Okay, so the very first thing we wanna do is we wanna wait for this DOM content loaded 
event to trigger. This is going to trigger once the DOM is all parsed and built out, as well as those defer scripts where we're importing GSAP uh, as soon as those finish loading as well. So we're going to pass that a function, this called init motion path, and we'll define the function up here. First thing we want to do in that function is register our plugin. So we just call gsap.register plugin motion path plugin. And now we're going to create a function called create tween. And that's inside init motion path. Notice that. All we're going to do is create the tween. We're going to say gsap.2. And remember, we gave the ID of dot to the dot that we want to animate. And then we have open and close curly brackets here, a JavaScript object. And we're going to start passing properties uh, to that for our gsap animation. First thing we want to do is we want to define a motion path property, and that's a, another value of an object and has more properties and values in there. So path, we're going to give it the ID name of path that we gave to our SVG. Remember, we did that in the beginning. Align, we're going to align the dot to path as well. We don't really have to do that because we have a circle here, uh, but if you had something more rectangular like a little car um, and you wanted it to align along the path, that's what that property does. And then also the origin. This, basically moves our div element over to the middle, uh, so 50% and 50%. And then lastly, auto-rotate is true. Again, with a dot, we don't really need this, but this rotates it around that line. Okay, and now we're going to set a duration of 8 seconds for the whole animation to play. We want it to repeat infinitely, so I give that a negative 1. You could set this to 20. Um, if you don't provide this, then it'll just go once. And then we'll set a repeat delay of 1 second so that it gets to the end, it waits 1 second, and then repeats itself. And then we'll also set an ease of none. And if I save and refresh this, we get nothing. Oh, that's because we need to call create tween down here. So now we call it. And if I save and I run, now we get our tween happening. And remember, I talked about resizing. So now you'll notice if we resize, it's not working. And that is not good. However, if we do refresh, then it works. Um, so what we're going to do is our strategy now is going to be to call this uh, create tween function on a window resize event. So to do that, I'm first going to take care of a couple housekeeping items. I'm going to declare a null variable called tween, and we're going to set this and, and do things on whether this is null or not. And this is going to be null when we first call um, when we first call our init motion path function, but it won't be if we're resizing the window in between. So now within the create tween function, we'll create a variable called progress. And progress, if tween, this is called a ternary expression. If tween is null, then this statement executes. If tween is defined, then this statement executes. So we're just trying to save our progress here. And if it's our first time, then tween is null, so we'll save it as zero. Otherwise, we're within our resize event, and we want to get the tween's progress and save that in progress. Next, we'll kill any pre-existing tween. So this is assuming. Again, this is tween exists. Then we'll call this line of code here. So we set progress to zero and then kill the tween. Now we're going to assign that variable tween that we have up here, this global variable. We're going to assign our gsap.2 statement oops, to that tween. And then lastly, we want to set the tween's progress. Um, let's we'll say we're resizing and we saved that progress. Now we want to set it back to where it was. And the last thing we need to do is we need to actually listen for that resize event. So we'll call that here. Um, window.add event listener gets a key or a parameter of a string called resize. And then we pass the function create tween to that. So if I save and now come back and refresh, everything's still working. And as I resize, it's resizing dynamically, which is pretty cool. Well, that's all I have to show you today. If this helped, be sure to like and subscribe. And then YouTube is going to recommend some other videos of mine for you to watch. Uh, if you liked this one, then chances are you might like those too. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah.